It's a concept that's been known for over 100 years. Uh, initially, it was identified as being a, uh, uh, lying at the level of the, the cells that line the blood vessel wall, the endothelial cells. But now it's sort of evolved into a, a wider con context of, of the neurovascular unit because it's known that it's not just the endothelial cells that line the blood vessel wall, but the cells that are associated with the, with the blood vessel itself. And indeed, neurons themselves and, and microglia and other cell types all influence the way that the blood-brain barrier uh, behaves. It's essentially the same in, in children and adults. Uh, there are, there's evidence that as we go older there's dysfunction begins to occur in, in the blood-brain barrier and its main function is to control the microenvironment of the brain. Uh, it, so it very strictly regulates the passage of molecules into and out of the brain and also immune cells so that the, the the, the, the neural sort of milieu is really tightly controlled. Very often in diseases there's an impact on, 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 on the vasculature and in terms of uh, tumours one of the, the major problems is that you, you get breakdown of the, of the barrier properties. Uh, <clears throat> one of the obvious things uh, that, that, that one sees is that the the junctions between endothelial cells become dysfunctional. So normally they will exclude the passage of, uh, of molecules and, and they're very impermeable. And what happens is as the vessels grow within a tumour, they grow very abnormally. Um, so they become very, very leaky. Uh, so that in itself is a problem. But then at the same time, there are areas of the, uh, uh, in the peritumoral region or elsewhere in the brain where you might want to get your drugs to and the barrier might remain intact and normal in those regions. So it's very heterogeneous. Well, one of the, the main problems is that where there's still sufficient barrier function, getting drugs into the brain is a problem because unless there's a specific transport process there to carry the drug across, they won't readily uh, uh, diffuse into the into the tumor the tumor structure. So uh, that that's a, a real issue. If the barrier is very leaky, then drugs may well get across. But then sometimes you know that's not where you really want the delivery of your drug. You want it in the invading edge where perhaps the barrier is intact. So as I say, it's a very heterogeneous situation, and getting drugs across the barrier. Um, in areas where it's intact is really where the real challenge lies. Absolutely, and, and you know there are drugs that uh, that have been quite effective um, in treating other things, but actually uh, are neurotoxic, but we're protected from them because of the blood-brain barrier, and so they can be used safely. Um, so it, it does operate in, in, a, in a form of protecting us from you know, xenobiotics. Yes, well, I mean, there have been various ways. There have been ways in which you can just simply try and shrink the blood vessels using a high prosmolar solution, and that literally pulls the junctions apart. Um, there are clearly going to be problems with that because it's not particularly well controlled and it affects the whole of the brain. There are ways in which one tries to use signaling uh, receptors that signal to the junctions and cause junctions to more sort of physiologically or pathophysiologically open up uh, in a temporary fashion so that you can deliver drugs. And then there are ways you can use sort of Trojan horse approaches whereby you use existing transport systems to carry your drugs across. But there are limitations there in size and also what type of compound you can get across in that way. And also vesicular activity, you know, using um, macromolecular transport systems. Um, and then of course there's lots of uh, other, other strategies to use uh, nanoparticles um, to try and deliver that, that will cross the barrier. So there are, there are multiple ways in which one can try and circumvent that from vascular delivery um, uh, uh, methods. And then there are ways where you can actually just sort of inject directly, for example, into the brain using cannula, which again will circumvent the, the barrier. So there are lots and lots of ways in which people are trying to achieve this and in fact it's something that has been the sort of holy grail for, for, for decades uh, and we're still sort of struggling to find an ideal uh, way to sort of really meet our needs in, uh, in this context. I think the fact that there are so many different approaches and so many different ways that people are trialling and trying to uh, achieve 
delivery across the barrier. It just demonstrates in itself that, that we still really haven't found the answer. Um, and although we're sort of improving the way that we can deliver drugs, um, it, it, we're still a long way from actually achieving satisfactory delivery. And again, then you've got the, the issue of what drugs exactly one wants to uh, get to the brain. I think particularly in the, in the childhood uh, brain tumours, one of the things that struck me is that there's still sort of very little known about the vasculature in these tumours. And I, I think because they're fairly rare diseases, the, the, there is a, a real need to understand in much more detail the heterogeneity of the vasculature of these tumours uh, and uh, in the surrounding regions. And it's only then when we understand what sort of level of barriers barrier exists there, whether indeed the, new, the vessels within the tumour are well perfused because they've got to be perfused to be able to deliver the drugs in the first instance, whether one can improve perfusion to deliver drugs, which is sort of the issue of vascular normalisation. Um, I think until, until we know a little bit more and, and we're better informed, um, it's still going to be difficulty, uh, difficult to sort of achieve delivery across the whole of the tumour and in all the regions where we need to. You might achieve delivery to parts of the tumour with a particular strategy but not other parts. I think the ultimate answer, as in many sort of uh, diseases, is it's going to be uh, combinatorial approaches, that one or two drugs are not going to work, we have to do multiple drugs, multiple approaches, and the, the method of treatment is going to get more and more complex, but as we do, we get it more and more effective as well. There are a number of very interesting approaches, and I'm looking forward to hearing some of them that are going to be reported at, at, at this meeting and I think there is improvement being made uh, but I think there's still lots of need for funding and further investigation um, to really sort of be able to achieve you know, adequate delivery of, of, of therapeutics. Mm -hmm.